Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. For this project, I'm using a wooden charger plate that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm going to give it one good coat of my DIY chalk paint, and I'm using a chip brush because I want a lot of brush strokes in this paint technique. I'm also going in the same direction. You can see that I'm just going up and down consistently because I want this to have sort of a wood grain feel. Next, I'm going to attach these extra large wooden beads as feet, so this can be a decorative wall piece, but also a tray. I'm gluing these together so there's raw wood on raw wood, which means the glue will hold much better. Once this has dried, I'm also going to give the complete bottom along with the beads a coat of my white chalk paint. I want to give this plate a shiplap look, so I'm just using my ruler and a pencil, and I'm going to just draw three lines. I've already measured them out and put a little dot so I know where to go with my lines. I wanted the shiplap lines to be a little bit distressed, so I'm just using my finger and smudging that pencil all the way across. This really made a big difference in how the piece looks. The technique I'm using today requires me to add water to the projects. So in order for my chalk paint not to bleed or run or come off with the water, I'm giving it a good coat of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. The process I'm using today is water slide decal paper. I get mine from Hippo and I do have a link for it down in my description box. It is a really inexpensive way to achieve an IOD stamp or transfer look without having to spend all that money on those transfers. I used my detail scissors to cut out the design fairly close to all of the leaves, but I didn't want to go too detailed because then it's really difficult to hang on to the product when you're trying to get it on your project. With water slide paper, the next step is to immerse it completely in some really nicely warm water. You don't want it hot, but you don't want it to cool. And you need to press everything down. So you can see all of the little edges that I cut out are curling up. And that's why I didn't want to go too detailed with my cutting, because I still need to be able to push all of this down into the water. You're going to leave it here for a good 35, 40 to 60 seconds. Once you see that the plastic is starting to lift off from the paper, you're ready to pull it out. When I'm working with larger projects like this, I like to use a spray bottle to mist my item. It just makes it easier to make sure that there's enough water underneath the water slide paper so you don't have a hard time getting it stuck down. So what you do then is just pull off the paper from underneath. Make sure that your design is attached to some part of your project at the top and then gently pull out the paper paper from underneath. Take your time with this because it can wrinkle, but you have some time to move it and get it nice and straight. That's why you want a decent amount of water underneath your project so you can lift it off and then press it down where it needs to be. Then take a soft cloth or a tissue. I like to use a tissue and gently press from the inside out, making sure that you're pushing all of those water bubbles out to the edge. And the reason you're using either a paper towel or a tissue is that once that water gets to the edge, it gets absorbed by the tissue and then you're not left with a water puddle mess. Next, I'm going to freehand the word gather on it. I am looking at a paper above there that has the word that I want in the font style, so I can just duplicate that down on my tray. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my Sharpie oil-based marker and fill it in. I'm giving it one coat of matte Mod Podge so I can make sure that that transfer is permanent. And I am absolutely in love with this project. If you're interested in a full tutorial on how to use water slide decal paper, I will list that in my description box and on the end screen of this video. One thing to note, you do need to use a matte 
clear spray on your decals, otherwise they turn out shiny. The can I grabbed at the store the last time was a semi-gloss, which is a huge no-no. That's why you can see all of the shine on these projects, but I still think they turned out absolutely beautiful. Today's video is in collaboration with my sweet friend Chantel over at Crafty Hints. We both love water slide decal paper and the heat transfer paper, so we joined together to give you a whole bunch of different ideas to use those products and create high-end looking home decor on a budget when you're done watching my video, I would appreciate it if you could go down to my description box, click on the link to Chantel's video, hit that red subscribe button, like and comment and tell her I sent you. For this second project, I'm using this tall terracotta pot. I got a set of two of them at the thrift store and I just love the size and the shape of them. They're just very unique. Anyhow, I'm giving it one rough coat again with my chip brush of my white chalk paint. It doesn't matter if a little bit of the terracotta shows through because I want it to be fairly rustic. Now, if you don't have a Lazy Susan or a turntable like this when you're working on round projects, you are missing out. Make sure you hit those thrift stores or check out anywhere you can find a turntable or a Lazy Susan because it makes the work so much easier when you can spin that project around. To give the pot more of an aged look, I'm just using a brush that already has my mushroom colored paint on it, and I'm just giving it a dry brush, a little heavier in some areas, a little lighter in other areas. It really doesn't matter. Whatever suits you, whatever you like. I found some really pretty olive sprig designs on pixabay.com, and everything that I have found will be available on my website as a free printable so make sure you check that link in my description box as well. This again is a water slide decal so I'm soaking it in water and then I'll apply it to the pot. I printed off some smaller sprigs of the olives and I'm just going to add a couple of them to the lip of the pot as well. For this pot, I decided to make a tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take some of these glass beads that I got from the dollar store a long time ago. They've just been hanging out in my stash. And I'm just gonna put some down at the bottom to give it a little bit of weight. Using my utility knife, I'm just gonna cut the corners off of this block of styrofoam and then wedge it down into the pot. I'm going to be making a tree. So what I took first was just a leftover piece of stem. It is a plastic stem, but it's brown. And I'm taking these little boxwood stems. I've cut the little circle down at the bottom to make it a little bit easier to push them onto the stems. And I'm going to continue filling up all of the stems with this boxwood. Once I had filled up all the little stem pieces, I then took some additional green stems and glued them on just with some hot glue. I wanted to fill it in just a little bit and make it look more full. I pushed the stem into the styrofoam and used a little bit of hot glue to make sure it stayed in place. Now I'm taking some green floral wire and just bending it into a U shape because I want to add some of this moss, but I don't want to glue it down should I ever decide to change my mind about this later on. So I can just take this little bit of wire and push it down into the moss, into the styrofoam, and it will hold it in place really well. If you are enjoying this video and haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that red button. If you're coming over from Chantel's channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. 
this canister had a makeover during the Christmas holiday season and I did use a water slide decal on it. These are so easy to remove just using some rough grit sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease and you can get that whole decal off without really harming your painted surface. However, I am going to be repainting this and giving it another makeover. This paint color is called Mushroom and it is a latex paint that I have used in my home, but I have added some talc to make it a chalk paint. I'm going to give it one good coat. That's all I needed to cover up the paint that was there before. I love the IOD crockery stamps and their sprig stamps. I just think they're beautiful. But again, I do not have the budget for those, but I do have the budget for water slide decals. I created this knockoff on Google Drawing. And if you're interested in learning how to create these types of labels, let me know down in the comments because I do have a tutorial that I have not uploaded yet. I just want to find out if there's any interest in anybody wanting to learn how to create their own. Now again, I'm just taking it out of the water and I'll apply it to my croc, smoothing it out. And this turns out absolutely beautiful. I really love the way this one turned out. If you want to have this particular decal, it will be down in my description box as a free printable. For this project, I'm using two of these little wood panel frames that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They're the four and a half inch size. I'm using watered down burnt umber paint as my stain and I'm just going to stain the frame all the way around. I used my white chalk paint to paint the interior of the frame and give it a nice clean background. These two little images are my take on the IOD sprig stamps. Again, I used the water slide decal paper and now I'm just going to be cutting them out. I placed both of these little decals right in the center of each of the panels. And then I used some Mod Podge again to seal it all in place and blend out the lines of the decal. I added a shoestring bow in a black and white gingham to the top of each of the frames and I think they turned out super cute. If you don't have a Cricut and you like to do some of these printables on fabric, you can use the heat transfer paper. I'm cutting out a piece of drop cloth fabric because that's where I want to put this beautiful magnolia printable onto. This paper is a vinyl and it has a paper backing and you just trim off the edges what you don't need to get rid of all of that white space. I like to use a paper trimmer when I'm cutting straight lines because this vinyl is a little fussy sometimes and with your scissors you might not be able to get a complete straight line. Of course if you're cutting something out that isn't straight you will definitely just have to use your scissors. I've got my area prepped for my heat press. The first thing I'm going to do is just press my drop cloth fabric to get out any of the wrinkles and get it nice and warmed up for my heat transfer. I find that the hardest part of this kind of paper is to pull off the paper backing. It is so tight onto that vinyl piece that it's a little bit of a struggle to get it off. I like to peel it off very slowly and gently so I don't get any creases in that piece of vinyl. This heat transfer paper comes with a sheet of grease proof paper for the heat transfer, but I like to use these Teflon sheets. They work really well and they're a lot bigger than the other sheet. I'm using my heat press for about 30 seconds on 325 degrees, but with this heat transfer paper, you can definitely just use a regular iron. 
Now that it's nice and cool and stuck to my fabric really well, I'm just going to pull some of the strands and fray the edges all the way around. I wanted to make my little magnolia piece pop, so I'm taking some of this grain sack stripe ribbon that I got at Michael's, and I'm just creating a frame around the edges. I even miter cut the corners of the ribbon to make it look more like a real frame. If you're unsure how to do the mitered corners, straight corners would look beautiful as well. So if you've been around on my channel for a while, you know I'm not really a bow person, but lately I've been kind of warming up to them. So I've decided that I'm going to try another messy bow. I did one on a previous video and I wasn't too happy with it. It was more kind of not messy enough. So I'm just cutting some strips of different types of materials. I'm using a few drop cloth. I've got some lace. I've even got some white rope and I'm using the grain sack stripe as well. I laid down a piece of twine which will help me then tie it up when I'm done and I'm just placing the ribbons and the rope and the string down every which way because I guess this is how you would create a messy bow. At least this is how I've seen people do it. I don't think mine turned out 100% yet so I think I'm still going to have to practice but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I put the drop cloth in an old fashioned pant hanger that's wooden. You can see a little bit of that red fabric in between, but once it's hanging, it doesn't show. I glued the messy bow right to the center of that wood hanger. And I think this project is also really beautiful. I truly hope you enjoyed my projects today and got some inspiration to try some of these techniques for yourself as well. I've got links for all the products down in my description box. Also, don't forget to click on Chantel's video link so you can go over and see what she created with these products. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button because that gets me noticed more on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Bye for now.